Are you on here? Perfect. I am. All right. <laughs> you made it back. <laughs> I did. All right. Awesome. All right. I've got uh, 531. So let's, uh, and I see we have an executive session tonight. So let's get this party started. Um, and I'll call to order the uh, Woodman Hills Metropolitan District Regular Board Meeting for Thursday, August 27th, 2020. And we'll start with roll call. Troy Terry Sinsen. Rand, present. Okay. John Martin, present. Okay. Neil Erickson, present. Stacy Popovich, present. And Troy Stenson presence. We have all five. We do have a quorum. Um, and so I'll now, I, can I get a motion for us to enter executive session for determining positions relative to matters that may be subject to negotiations under CRS 2464024E? I motion we go into executive session. Okay. I have, what's the uh, negotiation? Does somebody, because there's nothing written on here on what the negotiation is about or what the uh, subject is. So there's a couple of things that are going on. <clears throat> I've uh, discussed with uh, Stacy as well, um, looking at the matter of our bonds. Um, currently I've got First Bank, Daniel Apricio is actually reviewing our bonds. We're at as far as financing and our current accounts for the district. Um, so, these are, can on the on. so these are for bank negotiations? Banking negotiations and uh, bond negotiations as well. Okay. So just preliminary you know, investigation into what our current bonds are. Um, reviewing our accounts, our account systems for how we're doing banking. Uh, maybe streamlining okay. that process. Okay, that's all I needed. Just something the subject of the of the executive session. So, um, I have a motion to go into executive session. Do, can, do I have a second? I'll second. I second. Go ahead. Okay. So I have a motion from John, a second from Stacy. Uh, all in favor. Aye. 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 Okay, motion carries. Uh, we'll now enter executive session. For those of you watching at home, uh, you'll be in a waiting room until we finish. Um, and then the, Daniel will bring everybody back to the, uh, to the live meeting. Now, do we do anything or does Daniel do something? I I do it. I'm going through and putting everybody okay. one by one in the waiting room now. Gotcha. Okay. See you in just a little bit. Okay. This is weird. <laughs> Get everybody out. Thanks for coming. Stand by. Troy? Yes. And I have another matter to discuss in the executive session. Okay. Um, then we'll just have to add it in. Well, we'll have that discussion. We'll add it onto the agenda. Jerry, say something so that I can verify the phone number you're calling from. Something. <laughs> Thank you. I like it. <laughs> Is yours the six six zero number? No. You, you're the, calling the, from the number I'm, the number I'm calling from. Right. Is four nine five twenty five hundred. Got it. Okay. You mean you're still at work? I am. Mm. All right, so let me go through the list of everybody in here to make sure I have this right. I'm in here, 49.5, uh, Jerry's in here, 
Ted is in here, Troy is in here, John is in here, Neil is in here. Stacy, you're in here from Westcott Fire, right? Yeah, I don't know how to get two IDs, so. This is fun. Je um, Jed is in here, Rachel's in here, and Sherry's in here. And let me ask, uh, first of all, I'm going to turn my own sound off during your meeting so that I can't actually hear it. But as the host, I can't put myself in the waiting room. So Troy will text me when you're finished with your meeting and I'll know to let everybody back in. That's number one. Number two, should I uh, stop recording, Ted? You don't have to record so long as an attorney is present. Got it. And then let's, okay. so th just so I'm clear, if folks call in like right now, they can't access the meeting. Correct. I have to let them in if they were to get try to get in right now. Okay, perfect. All right, I'm ending the recording. Okay, nobody's in the waiting room, everybody's back in the meeting. Okay, we are now back in public session. And I know we just brought you all back, but I'm going to ask for a motion to take a five minute recess um, so that we can whether it's get refreshments or use the facilities um, coming out of this uh, well, extended executive session. Can I get a motion? Sure, I'll make a motion that we take a five minute recess. Okay. And a okay. second. And a second from Stacy. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, we'll be in, it's uh, 7.02, so we'll resume at 7.07.
Okay, I have 707. Do we have everybody back? I'm back. I'm back. Okay. Stacy. Sherry. I'm here. here. Okay. I'm here. Stacy, you here? I think we lost Stacy. Stacy um, is on, but muted. Stacy, if you can hear us and you're speaking, we can't hear you. Is she on there? I'm here. Okay. I'm here. All right. Just wanted to make sure. Yep. Okay. I'm back. All right. Perfect. Okay. Um, we are back in session. Uh, apologize for the long executive session. There's quite a bit to discuss. Um, we are on item five, the president's welcome and remarks, rules of conduct. Um, thank you all for being here. It seems like the months uh, get a little bit longer here under uh, the current pandemic and, and other things going on around the country between hurricanes and and riots and everything else going on. We kind of um, lose focus on our little uh, our little piece of uh, the town out here and uh, and what we're out here doing. But I want to thank you all for being here and being a part of, uh, of what we're trying to do for the district here. Um, can I have somebody, I have my little American flag here, if somebody would like to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I will. Okay, perfect. I pledge allegiance. To the flag. To the flag of the United, United States, States of America. America. And, and to the Republic, Republic for which it stands. Which it stands. One nation, under God, God, indivisible, with liberty and justice Thank you, Stacy. That's the best I can do without just putting a big one across the back wall there. So, um, all right, um, let's move to, once again, welcome everybody. We appreciate y'all being here. I know we're on Zoom again. Um, we just do not have a facility right now big enough to house the community and us and maintain the state and counties um, and CDC standards for uh, social distancing and um, uh, in one of our facilities. Uh, we risk too many people showing up and, and it, um, becoming a, uh, a big issue. So uh, with that being said, I'd like to move on to item six, approval of the agenda. And I would like to note before somebody motions, um, we're going to add under executive session uh, the personnel matters pursuant to CRS 246401F1 in reference to personnel matters that were discussed in executive session. And we'll add um, the uh, Jerry's resolutions um, under other business if you want to list those out under other business. I I, go ahead. I had it in my head a second ago. I motion that we approve the agenda as amended. Okay, do I have a second? Second the motion. Okay, with the motion by John and a second by Neil. Uh, any further discussion on the agenda? Okay, all in favor of approving the agenda with the amendments? Aye. 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 Okay, motion carries, unanimous.
Okay, no, item seven is approval or disapproval of the board minutes. I will have to ask Ted if I can vote on the minutes since I was not present at the last meeting. Yes. Yes, I can. Yes. Okay. I make a motion that we approve the minutes. Let me wait a minute. I'm gonna change my mind and say no. Okay. I didn't. I didn't think so. Thank you. You're, you can't approve something you weren't didn't participate in. I second the approval of the board minutes. Okay. So with a motion and a second, any further discussion on the minutes? Okay, uh, all in favor of approving the minutes for the July 23rd meeting. Aye. 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 Motion carries. And one abst abstention. Yes. Okay, attorney's report, item eight. Um, two matters. <clears throat> One is I reviewed an IGA for possible amendment in months to come, uh, details of which are not resolved. Just I, I looked at it and commented. Uh, the second one deals with Parks and Rec, and I'll, I think, I'll be more in place to do it when we get to the Park and Rec report. It's, it's relevant to the new building. Uh, that's all. Okay. Nothing else. All right. Okay. Uh, item nine, approval or disapproval of the financials. So the July 2020 financials. And I get a motion to either approve or disapprove the financials. I will make a motion to approve the financials. Second. Okay, I have a motion by Sherry and a second by, who was the second by? John. John, to approve the financials as presented to the board. Any further discussion on them? Okay, no further discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Unanimous. Okay, item 10 is the park and rec report. Jed, the floor is yours. All right, thank you. Um, so we have a lot going on, which is fantastic. Uh, I'll start with our concerts. We had three very successful concerts, um, well attended. Food trucks all made money. Everybody was happy. We socially distanced. Um, I know some of you have been there uh, for one or more of the concerts and um, bands were great. We did have a little bit of a hiccup. One of the band backed out late due to a health issue and we were able to fill that in. Um, and due to uh, popular demand and a lot of people asking for a fourth, we have scheduled a fourth concert uh, for Saturday, September 19th. So. Um, we are, Daniel's made that flyer and we're slowly getting that out there so that uh, people can enjoy themselves one more time before we uh, wrap that tent up and put the stage away for the season. Um, so that's a positive thing. Uh, maintenance, maintenance, I just want to uh, get the word out there. They're doing an unbelievable job. Um, we have ordered 12 new trees to replace the dead trees, both at Balkan Park and at the Rec Center East. Um, They've done some painting. They finished the painting over at CCW, uh, the fence around the uh, pool and the handrails uh, looks really sharp. Um, we've ordered a water filtration system for RCE um, and they will be installing that when it gets in in September. Um, we are in the process of, uh, I think they're ordered the indoor pool lights. There was three or four that were not done in the past. Um, and so we're gonna swap out those last three or four lights. Um, 
what else do we have here? Uh, they did take down the split rail fence over at RCE. They did that this week. Uh, that's in preparation for the new build. Uh, has to come down anyway, just because of where they're working and all the machinery and that type of thing. Um, but we are planning to, we were able to probably save about 70% of that. Um, reuse it over at Horseshoe Park for a fence line around uh, the parking lot area. Um, so we're going to kind of reuse that. But they've been doing a great job and just want to kind of give them credit where it's due. Um, RCE Edition, I'm going to get back to, save that for the last thing. Disc Golf Course, the back nine has been designed um, by the uh, Colorado Springs Flying Disc Club. Uh, they were out there a bunch of times. They really designed a really neat course staked it out for us. Uh, it's going to be polar opposite of the one that we have in the sense of the first nine was a beginner course, kind of a, a trial run, so to speak, to see uh, if the community would like it, and they do. And so the back nine is going to be an advanced course. There's a lot of obstacles. The distances are much longer. It's uh, It looks really neat. We've ordered the baskets, and uh, we're kind of going full steam ahead on that one. So uh, definitely excited. And my goal is to have everything done by the end of September on that. Um, so, Ted, real quick, can I ask you a question? Yep. We talked about it a couple of weeks ago um, about having that added to the website on where the discourse is located, where it starts, where it finishes. Has any of that been done to be added to the website? Um, I can answer that a little bit, and then I think Daniel can chime in and, uh, and give you more detail. It has been added. We've added both pictures and a brief description of the first nine and where it's located. Um, and I know there was conversation from you about um, updating that, that trails map or the map that's on our website. Uh, I'm not 100% sure what it's called. Uh, and that's something maybe Daniel can talk to or um, kind of give more clarity to. Um, but yes, there is stuff up on the website as to where it's located and a description of, of what we have to offer. Uh, Daniel, do you wanna sure. add anything there? So John, we do have a new tab under Parks and Rec called Disc Golf that include pictures and uh, mentions that it begins across the street from Horseshoe Park. I know the trail map that you're talking about, John, and I think uh, perhaps you mentioned in conversation with Jed, you'd like to see updated with reference to the disc golf course. I would like that too. I unfortunately inherited that trails map from a predecessor when I started with the district back in 2016. The only file I have is the one that is displayed up on the website. So if we wanted to make a new trails map, uh, that refer to the disc golf course, we would have to build that from scratch and that would be a, an expensive proposition. Jed and I discussed this a couple days ago and I, I think that what we uh, decided was for the moment we were going to use this verbal description saying that it begins across the street from Horseshoe Park because there's no good way to update the map. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um... We are looking into some different things and, and working on scheduling some different things. Uh, Meridian Ranch and, and myself are working on a uh, floor hockey league over at their gym um, before they redo or resurface their gym floor. Uh, we're looking to do that late fall, beginning of winter. Um, during the winter, we're also looking to do a youth basketball league together. Um, we're obviously, we have our teams, they have theirs, and we set up a league uh, playing against each other. Um, we are working on some District 49 mini camps that would be run in mid-October in the two weeks that they have off. Um, we're looking into an archery uh, program during that time also. Um, well, myself, I'm already certified to teach it, and then we're looking into uh, getting one other staff member certified for that so that we could teach those types of things for our youth. Um, I've reached out to the Falcon Middle School football coach, and he is, uh, we just finalized that today. We're going to be running a, um, a mini camp, a three-day football camp for middle school age kids. Um, so we just finalized that today, which is kind of really good news. Um, we've been getting estimates on some reglazing of the, the tiles, just kind of a, a preliminary um, conversation there in, in RCE, and also 
looking into, uh, they, we've gotten three out of the four estimates for repainting our pool area. Um, <clears throat> right now, I think it looks a little dated and um, definitely with four different color schemes going on. I think uh, making that light and bright and sharp uh, would just make us all look uh, a little bit better there. So uh, we've been getting estimates on that also. So some really good things that we're, we're looking to add. Um, I am still waiting to hear from District 49 as far as I know I mentioned, I think last meeting uh, their baseball field over at Woodman Hills Elementary School, trying to kind of make a deal with them where we can take that over and, and manage it, so to speak, and uh, use it to, you know, generate some revenue and give, give another thing for our community. Uh, so I'm still waiting to hear back from them. Um, window and stucco project. The application was done wrong. Um, the gentleman from construction management uh, that was overseeing the project brought to our attention, it was alligatoring, which for lack of a better term is uh, basically you have all these hairline fractures in the stucco. So um, long story short is they were required to come back out and restucco the entire area. Uh, so we have a brand new coat of stucco on that. And um, we are, so that's completed and we're waiting for them to come back out um, construction management and give the final walkthrough, which I begin to believe is Monday or Tuesday next week. Uh, so I'll keep you updated on that. The stucco on the other side, they did apply the correct way. There's a couple minor, minor spots that um, when they come back out for the final walkthrough, I'm going to point them out to them just to, uh, to fix those for us. Uh, but it looks really sharp and would love for you guys to come by and, and check that out. Um, golf tournament. This is a uh, at least first that I know of, I could be wrong, that we are working with Antlers Creek Golf Course. Uh, we have set up a tournament. Uh, it is Saturday, October 3rd. We'd love for all of you to get a team together and come on out and support us and, and have a blast. We are running it as a fundraiser for what I think is a fantastic organization. It's uh, Operation Underground Railroad, um, which uh, kind of deals with anti-human trafficking and unbelievable organization i think and uh i think our goal is to make 2500 dollars for them that's what we've set for ourselves um so i'm going to do my sales pitch one more time and we want you guys out there and support us and and support them and get a team of four together uh, um so we have been advertising that daniel's i can't give him enough credit uh he's unbelievable just to get the word out there and, and help us with all of that type of stuff posting things and getting an update on the website and all that. So uh, we've been pushing that. I believe we have two sets of four as of the time I left work today. Um, so it, it's slow, but it's steady and, and we'll get our, we'll reach our goal. That's, uh, that's what we're going to do. Um, sports flag football registration is going on right now. Uh, I believe we're at about 22 or so. Um, we're trying to grow that and continue to get the word out there. Um, first two weeks of our flag football Program will be again crossover games with Meridian Ranch. Um, we started that with soccer uh, and it went really, really well. We got great feedback from their side. We got great feedback from our coaches uh, and our staff that were working that. Uh, and everyone loved it. Everyone wants to grow it and continue that. So I think that was a great start. We're going to do it with football also, uh, where there's to be two weeks of crossover games and then four weeks of in house games. Um, but over time, we want to kind of grow that to be more. Um, so, uh, so that was our sports program so far. Uh, Liberty Tree Academy, we've really grown that relationship. They had rented out our Balkan Park uh, field for soccer in the evenings uh, or afternoons, four to five every day, or most days, I should say. Um, we, we generate a little bit of revenue off that, but more importantly is to kind of open the, uh, the gates for dialogue. They are renting our... Um, I want to say our disc, disc golf course area, horseshoe area for two cross country meets. Uh, we've walked that with them a couple of times. We're going to kind of line that for them. Uh, something different, something unique, something new, which I think is good. Again, it gets our properties out there. It shows what we have to offer. Uh, it's good PR with the school uh, and we get a few bucks back for it also. And um, they kind of run it. So we don't have to do too much uh, as far as that. Um, they want to also rent out as the school year progresses, 
they want to rent out our disc golf course. I think that's how the dialogue started originally. They came to walk the disc golf course um, for their PE classes. They've talked about renting our pool at RCE for some PE classes. So uh, they're kind of open to, to really grow in that relationship. And I think that'll be great for us. We've also reached out to um, Woodman Hills Elementary School and kind of offered the same things to their PE programs and school as a whole also. And I think, again, all that stuff is just good dialogue for, for both sides, for everybody. Um, painting classes. Painting classes have taken off. Uh, again, something that I'm, I, I could be wrong, I'm not aware that they weren't before. We started with a um, uh, painting with a pro. And again, I'll give Daniel credit for uh, naming it. Um, so uh, painting with a pro on Friday night, uh, September 4th. And we booked up, we maxed out at 12 immediately. Uh, so we set up another date for later in September. And we have a bunch of people already signed up for that one. Uh, in addition, we're doing a Mommy and Me, which I think is a great niche for us, uh, some different Mommy and Me types of classes. Uh, but the painting one, Mommy and Me, filled up immediately also in the beginning of September. So we set up a second one also for later in September. And again, we have a whole bunch of people uh, interested and signed up for that one also. So we're going to continue to grow those. And the goal is to kind of do at least one of each of those per month. Um, the other thing that uh, there's been a lot of dialogue and we've got the flyer out there now um, to add, bring bingo, bring, I uh, can't speak, uh, bingo back. Um, and Fran is gonna be running that. Uh, so we have a date set up in September for, or, I'm sorry, October for that. Um, and then there was, it kind of morphed into some other conversations. Uh, we are starting a Mahjong group um, and I believe uh, Neva is going to run that for us and, and she's excited for that. Um, we're gonna try that and there's, there's been some interest um, with our seniors and we are bringing uh, Bunko in and we're gonna do that a couple of times in October also. Um, and then obviously if they grow, which my anticipation is they're going to, uh, we'll just continue to do those each month um, and just give another uh, part of our community something to do during the day. Um, so excited about those. Uh, we have just started working on our fall festival slash chili cook-off. Uh, again, Fran is kind of spearheading the chili cook-off part of things. We're trying to grow that. I believe she said we had six participants last year and we're, my goal is to double it, try to get 12 participants uh, this year. We've reached out, we have a petting zoo already coming. We have a bounce house and the rock climbing wall coming for that event. We, uh, we've reached out to Bartlett's, I believe is the name of it. Um, Hay Company and they're donating um, some bales for us, 50 bales for that day that we can use and then return to them uh, when we're done. And, and so that's a great relationship uh, there already. Um, and we're excited. We've reached out. We're trying to get some vendors. I think we have three vendors already signed up for that day. Also, the fire department is coming. Reach out to them. Fire trucks will be there for the kids to climb through. So my goal is to make this uh, one of our bigger events this year um, and really have a blast. And that is uh, the date of October 10th. Um, so again, we'll keep advertising and, and getting the word out there and growing that. Uh, the luau went well. Uh, I know some of you guys attended. Um, we had roughly about 80 people throughout the day. Um, my goal was 100, but it was kind of an arbitrary number that I just kind of picked. And, and uh, our goal is to just grow that each year and maybe get a little bit better signage and banners and those types of things leading up to it. Um, but uh, it went well. Water slide was a big hit. Uh, pool was busy all day long. Uh, arts and crafts was a big hit. Food trucks made money. So um, it was a good day. And uh, I was glad that, uh, that we did that for the community. Um, and then back to the RCE edition. So RCE edition, we have met, sorry, let me grab my paperwork here. We have met with hammers. Uh, we went through some different components of the building. Um, and I believe, I'm just gonna kind of hold it up. I believe everyone has a copy of this. Yes. Okay, so uh, this is a uh, change order and there were certain things that we thought were unnecessary now and we could kind of revisit down the road and some things that we thought were necessities now and, and we needed to make sure they were in there and, uh, and build them into the cost now. Um, so I, I don't know if you want me to go down all of them or you want me to go down the ones that I think are important. Um, we got rid of storage room number two 
that saved us some money, as you can see. Um, the windows is where I want to ask a question. Um, and this is just my opinion. I think spending $20,000 on a six windows right now is, is probably not what we need. I think we can save that money for now and spend it somewhere else later if needed. Um, and that's just my opinion. Um, and totally I'll agree with you, Jed. Totally Jed. agree. Don't know why we need windows like that in the gymnasium side. So I'm just going to throw that out. Thank you, John, uh, as a question for you guys to vote on uh, or discuss, however you want to proceed with that one. But that's the one big question I had as far as do you want me to eliminate that and take that off of the change order um, or keep that on? Um, and again, I, I think if you eliminate those six windows and you get a good set of lights in there, I, th I think we've we've done our job, um, but I'll kind of continue down and then you guys can discuss it all at once. Uh, we're adding that coil door, that roll up door, which I think is a fantastic idea. Uh, so we can have bleachers in and out. We can have different items in and out. Uh, if we do crafts fairs and garlic fests and wing fest and those types of things, you know, people can come in and out very easily. Uh, we can get things uh, done rapidly. Um, so we, we added uh, a double door in the front that had, uh, they're calling it lights, but it's basically windows to allow um, obviously some natural light in, in that way. Um, the indoor interior doors, you know, the metal was more expensive than the wood. Again, there's a personal opinion. I think the wood looks sharper, cleaner, nicer, uh, and it was a little bit cheaper. So we saved a few bucks there. Um, we decreased, um, I'm sorry, I'm reading this wall between hallway and gym. Uh, so we shrunk that one, but we added above the locker rooms and the weight rooms. So if you're playing basketball, I like, I guess, first part is when you walk in, you have an open feel and you can see the court. Uh, it's not behind a wall. We didn't have to have double doors leading into the gym. So we got rid of all that. But if you're playing basketball now, uh, the way the building was designed, the the walls were only 10 feet high. So we increased that so balls didn't get stuck up on top of the, the locker rooms, bathrooms, and, and weight room, if that makes sense. Um, sorry, just kind of reading the notes here. Um, we added some sound, some sound insulation between the bathrooms themselves and also between the bathroom and the locker room just so uh, I guess noises and comfortability uh, when you're in the bathroom. Um, so I thought that was an easy thing. Uh, the snow and ice guards, again, um, you guys can have dialogue about that. Um, adding them on both sides, both sides of the roof uh, would be about $4,700. Um, there's obviously safety conversation intertwined in there. Um, but, uh, you know, it's an offset of costs and, and that type of thing, but uh, for you guys to have some dialogue about. Um, moving the HVAC from the back of the building where it would be exposed outside to up in the ceiling above the weight room actually saved us some money. Um, so I thought that was an easy switch for us. Um, we did add some steel uh, reinforcement for when the building was designed, the first initial thing was for two baskets. Um, and as you kind of walk into most gyms, you have six baskets. So if you're running a camp, you can have six stations. Or if we're running a youth league, we can go side to side and have two games going on at once. So we, we thought that adding the steel now, instead of having a company come back in, actually saves money. Uh, I know it's, a more of, it's an additional cost now, but it saves money long term. Um, and it makes the building more functional. So uh, that was something, uh, but in addition to that is adding the power to the six baskets. So um, each basket needs its own um, uh, panel and that's where that expense comes from that $12,000 there. Um, and then adding some framing, some steel across the middle. If we wanted to add a, a divider now or later that you know, obviously is up for dialogue. Um, but the steel framing is there. You don't have to have a company come back in and reinforce things. And, and so the cost, again, you add something now, but I think you save money long-term. And when you want to add a, whether it's a, an electric um, 
divider or, or a pull divider, either way, the steel is already there and ready to go. Um, there was a slight change in the dimensions of the building. Uh, and that was not on our end or hammers. That was from the county uh, based on uh, code, how far away from the existing building, the eaves of our existing building and how far away from the road um, or the sidewalk, I should say. So the dimensions changed a little bit, um, but they said that there's no cost change, even though the dimensions are going down just a little bit. Um, so I'll kind of throw that all at you guys. Um, you know, let you guys have some dialogue about it. Um, again, my opinion is, you know, what we've cut and what we've added are beneficial to the build, um, both short term and long term. Um, and the one suggestion or opinion I guess I would have is uh, the, the windows aren't necessary, but uh, that is all for you guys to decide. I haven't calculated this, but is this still within the 6%? Yeah, great question. Sorry, I uh, had that in my notes to, to talk about. We, sorry, give me two seconds here. We originally had a proposal of 1.588 and change. Mm -hmm. We had a 6% contingency, which I believe is somewhere right around 95. Mm -hmm. A total of 1.683 and change. By adding, and again, I'll just go with the conversation of if we only added 31,000 here instead of the 51,000. Again, up, up for dialogue, but if we save the price of the windows now, I guess is what I'm trying to say. And we added 31,000 to this, we are still not close to that extra 6% contingency. It still gives us uh, about $63,000, $64,000 um under budget okay i just want to make sure we stay within that our vote was contingent on those prices and when we went move forward with this so i want to make sure we stay within what we uh, sent forward basically as a board yes sir i'll open it up uh board members for discussion on the uh the windows in the gym first so I'll start because I was the one that recommended the windows. Um, I was going based off of the windows being replaced and looking lovely in the current rec center. I wanted to make sure because the two buildings aren't attached, they're two separate buildings, I wanted them to look similar. I didn't want one to look really nice and one look like, you know, an oversized garage. Um, and so that's why I recommended putting windows in that match similar to um, the current rec center east. So having that additional cost, uh, I didn't, for six windows, I didn't think it would come in at 20 grand. I was just, I wanted it to all go together. I didn't want a new build building and the current rec center looking completely different. Like, oh, that's the old building and this is the new one. That was that was all I was doing when we when we sat in that meeting. I was just thinking of making them look comparable. If you stand on the road looking at the front of the rec centers, and if you look at the drawing for the new addition, there are windows in the front of the new addition. For the waiter. Looking at them from the front, they're gonna look, you know nice side by side the windows for the gym were on the side correct from the drawing that i saw uh i'll kind of chime in here um so i think you all have a copy of this correct me if i'm wrong yes yes um so the top right picture is the back of the building um so that has four windows on the left side there. And now those are four windows that were already budgeted in the building for the weight room. So that's the natural light in the weight room. The one that's up top in the middle is one of the six additional windows. Does that make sense so far? Then you mm -hmm. have your 
roll up door, an emergency door. Uh, and I'm not 100% sure what that last thing is to the right there. Um, the bottom picture shows you four skinny windows up top and your front door, your double front door with windows in it. And then the last skinny window was going to be at the end of the, well, there's dialogue about that being at the end of the, the building, um, kind of behind the basketball hoop, um, or we could add a second one somewhere on the back side. Um, so I think cosmetically what you're referring to, if you look at the front of the building, you're just gonna have four uh, kind of sliver windows, so to speak, uh, up top. Does that make sense? As, as I'm describing the, the drawings? Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. So again, um, you know, it's for you guys to kind of decide on. Um, so now Jed, we can, uh, you know, we can always install windows later as well, right? This yes. Is you know, this is a steel building. So if we decide to determine that we need windows into the gymnasium. It's a whole lot easier to cut a hole than it is to, to repair a hole. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I, th I think we should skip the windows to save the money. Same here. We, the, stucco so the, the stucco is still gonna be the same as the existing rec center, right? Stucco color, yes. Yeah, so I just want to make sure that cosmetically, it is going to look like the existing rec center. It just would not have the windows in the gymnasium. It'll still have windows in the gym, right? Or in the uh, weight room. The weight room, yes. Those four in the back are already budgeted. Yes. Hmm. I would say we take the windows out or I mean, we could do it two ways. We could take the windows out now, we could leave it. And then if there's uh, any other changes that come about to where we need to move that money to something else right now, we know that it's there. We can always take that away. Do we need to make a motion or is it just a discussion? I would say it's just a discussion. Our motion will come once the final design is done let's just I, I would say just a discussion right now as to kind of which direction we're looking at this okay um, right now you have three of us that are saying no windows okay so we're waiting for you and we're waiting for sherry your opinions my opinion would be to leave it in there right now and then if we have other change orders we come back unless we find something else that we need in this building to use that 20 grand i mean what do you think jed um, you know, again, this is just my opinion. I, I, I kind of think back to all the high school or middle school gyms that we've all walked into and very few have natural light and windows in them. And yet they're nice and bright. Um, if you get the right lighting, um, which is our goal, uh, I, I think they still look beautiful and bright and light and, and happy. Um, personally, I would if it was just my decision, I would cut the windows out. I would take them and get rid of the 20000 for now and put it in our pocket and save it for down the road if there is another change order or we decide um, you want to buy tarps for the floor or a divider now or the million other things that we could go and buy. Uh, and that's just my opinion. Um, you know, I would save the twenty grand. Okay. How does ambient how does ambient light affect playing basketball? You know, is the sun going to be shining in at one minute so you can't see? Uh -huh. um, Definitely a conversation. Next. Yep. So, that's kind of why my why I always understood we never had windows in gyms, but or basketball courts. So. Hey, Jed. Yes. Have you thought about having banner hooks put on? Because I'm looking at the side real estate and the, the front back side of the building where there's a lot of space that's kind of open um, for actually having, you know, inexpensively banner hooks put in during the installation so that uh, it doesn't damage the finish for the, for the stucco. 
So you can do some preset sizes for events and banner sizes and just to have them to where they can go up there and easily be hooked, you know, and they're, they're, they look nice. So you can communicate to the community, you know, what events are going on and what events next, that kind of deal. Because there's a lot of side real estate on this building that could be used to um, notify the community. Uh, great idea. I hadn't thought of it. And uh, I can ask them, I don't foresee that being an expense or a very big expense. Put some. Yeah, I don't think that would be large at all. You know, it's just eye hooks and fall. But if you do them before the stucco is laid down, then you got less issues of damage and cracking instead of drilling something in after it's finished. Even if we had something like that, Woodman Hills has a digital board on the side of the school up there that displays messages of upcoming events and things, even if it was something to where on the street side, so it didn't affect the residents behind with the, the light from it um, to where we could add something like that, even if it was later on down the road on the side of that building as an advertising. I mean, that's a main thoroughfare there on Meridian Ranch Boulevard. So to have a, a digital advertisement board out there would be fantastic. So I would say, yeah, going with thinking about some of these other things that we could use that 20 grand for, I would say we eliminate, we just eliminate those windows for the gymnasium. We have windows in the I, room and that was my concern. My opinion on this whole thing is that we hired Jed because he has the expertise and if his recommendation is no windows, we go no windows. That's what we hired him for. Woo I think you have your answer there, Jed. Fair enough. I will uh, get back to Hammers first thing tomorrow um, and tell them where we're at. Um, the second item on there uh, that I would like to discuss is the uh, metal to wood doors. Uh, have they already checked with the fire bins? It's an assembly building requires special fire blocking and it doesn't have to have the metal doors separate in the... For those interior doors that we swapped out, no. The exterior... Okay. We're keeping metal for that reason up to code. Okay. Um, and then the other thing I had was the uh, snow and ice guards on the roof. For me, that's a safety issue on the outside. We have a lot of roof space there and having that there. So if somebody's walking around the exterior of the building, uh, we're not sending paramedics over there to address somebody getting crushed by a piece of ice sliding off that tin roof. I agree. Does anybody have anything else on that list? There's one thing that I don't see on that list and I don't see on the drawings, on the new drawings that were provided. Um, we had discussed moving the water heater to the locker room area and I don't see that anywhere. Has that been discussed? Yes, sorry, that was discussed. Um, that price was a little over $3,000 to put that extra little closet in there. Uh, so the dialogue that we had was again, $3,000 for a small um, mop sink and a water heater versus keeping it where it is. And I guess um, spending another 30 seconds running your your water to get the hot water if you were using it in the bathrooms. Um, You're moving water 135 feet. Yeah. How long does it take to move hot water 135 feet? It takes yeah. it takes me a long time just to get it from my water heater to my bathroom. <laughs> so would we ever have hot water in the locker rooms? Um, you know, again, that's that's dialogue uh, to have. Um, you know the cost versus, I guess the efficiency. Well, we just saved twenty thousand. I'm sorry. Hey. We just <laughs> saved twenty thousand. Yeah. True. Hey, and we, hey, Jed. we may have just spent it on the digital sign out front. Well, that's not a must. We would have Woodman Hills looking like Vegas. Right. <laughs> hey, Jed. Jed. Yes. So no water heater, I think heat, you know, for hot water, I think that's important to have because <clears throat> you're looking at cleanliness issue in a gym, right? So I don't know what the temperature drop is from dragging a bucket from one side that's hot water to the other side is going to be, but in winter, it'll probably go down pretty fast. Suggestion to you is, is take a look at, uh, there are companies that make 
instant heaters. They're electric, right? And so what they do is they instantly heat at the source and you can get those as cheap as 300 to 500 bucks for what you're trying to do. And it requires no tank. It's a tankless water heater, okay? And those you can probably just add in because it just gets plugged into the wall and it's got a water source that goes in and a water source that comes out. So we're not looking at something that's going to produce, you know, showers. We're looking at something that you can use your facility, clean up, things like that. So that's that's something that can be fixed for less than a thousand bucks, probably installed. Okay. I'll look into that tomorrow. I mean, it, it really depends on where they're tapping the water into the building at, too. I mean, are they tapping it in on that corner up there? Or are we running a water line all the way around this building just to get it to that corner? And then, you know, we're because we're talking about putting an HVAC system, which would include, I'm assuming, an air conditioning unit above uh, the weight room, which is on the other end of the building. And then you got a water heater on the opposite end of the building. So are we kind of dual purpose and we're shipping water back and forth from each end of the building before we're actually getting it used or, or, or how are they doing that? So I don't see that on here as far as talking about the water stuff, but I think the instant water heaters might be a solution to save us a lot of time and, and energy use of, of that getting shipped back and forth. Yeah, I like that. I like that idea. I think Jerry had brought that up a while back, those instant heaters. Um, to answer your first question, I believe the water, um, we tap in right in that corner where the, the water tank and that mechanical room are. Um, okay. you would have to bring that water all the way across diagonally to the bathrooms. Um, but the first thing in the morning, I'll, I'll look into the instant, um, instant heaters for the bathroom and see what that would cost us versus the 3000 and change for the, um, the closet and uh, bringing the water tank over there. Home Depot, 250 bucks. Perfect, thank you. <laughs> Other than that, I think the design looks good. It's, it's a very spacious building. Um, yeah, I'll be honest with you, we're, we're kind of, uh, to say we're jacked up is, is an understatement. Um, to be able to have this gym and use it for so many different things, when you have a, a massive space like that, um, I think, you know, the sky's the limit, number one. And number two, I think it alleviates a lot of um, some of the weight room issues that we're having at CCW uh, as far as the crowded, you know, facility and just kind of giving our community something really, really beautiful. So, Hey, Jed. Yes. I want to take you and make a comment and, and let you know that uh, you're doing a phenomenal job. You know, one of the things that I asked you was is that we had something for everybody and looking at all these new programs, the painting classes, Mommy and Me, Bingo, Banco, Mahjong, completely out of the box. Um, you know, nothing that I've seen, you know, for, for, the, for the 30 years that I've been out here. Phenomenal. Excellent Thank you. job. Excellent I job. That. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Anybody else? Hey, Troy, I would like to add something in since it falls under park and rec or do I need to go wait for other business? Oh, you can bring it in right here. So um, something that I discovered yesterday was reading through our bylaws. If you go to section 8.5 membership cards, this, uh, district residents, including children, will be issued a membership card to use district facilities. The car card should be presented each time district facilities requiring a fee are used or upon request by any district employee. Membership cards may only be used by the person whose name is on the card and not transferable. Lost cards may be reissued for a reasonable replacement fee. So I've been here for over three years. I signed my user agreement over three years ago, was never told about a membership card, didn't know that we required the card. Um, don't know, it, it, it's bringing up other questions to me like, how are we tracking and getting these numbers before of how many people were using the rec center when they weren't scanning the membership cards 
And if they were, whose cards were they scanning? Because I didn't have one and they never scanned anything from me. So I think we should, since that's part of our bylaws, I think that will kill a lot of birds with one stone. Um, if you don't have a user agreement, signed user agreement, you won't have a membership card. And that's one way we can verify that we are only allowing, allowing members in and that all the members that are in have a signed user agreement. And also, you know, Jed's been here since COVID. So he's working off a calendar. We're gonna come out of COVID someday and we're gonna have to account for people like I thought we were accounting for people, which obviously we weren't, by scanning the card every time somebody comes in. So is that something, Jed, that we can start doing is requiring people to use the membership card as our bylaws state, scanning them in every time they come in, and then that way we verify that everybody has a user agreement, an up-to-date user agreement. If you don't have an up-to-date user agreement, you're not coming in. If you don't have a card, you're not coming in. Yep. So, you know, you and I had talked uh, earlier today, um, and that is something that uh, as of today, we started, as people come in, we asked them if they have a membership card. Um, so I would say most, if not all, the people that are using our facility right now um, have a usage agreement for the family signed and in the computer system. So what's been happening is um, Mr. and Mrs. Smith come in to use the pool. Um, obviously, uh, they come to the front desk. They've already pre-signed up based on our calendar, uh, limiting the number of people in each room. Um, and they check in, okay, Mr. and Mrs. Smith. And then our front desk looks it up. We check it in and they are, if we see the usage agreement right there, they're obviously good to go. Um, if they don't have one, they have to sign one. Um, going forward, we are also asking the question, do you have a membership card? If they don't, which I know we ran into a little bit today, um, we are making them right then and there. It takes about two to three minutes for each person between their picture and the computer program, getting everything in there. Um, and then they have their card. Uh, so going forward, um, if you guys would like, we can go and I guess put it out there that we're only going by cards. Um, I think what we may run into there is there's a lot of people come for fitness classes and don't bring anything with them or they come to swim and they've forgotten their, their card. It's kind of like if you went to, went to the bank, I guess is my analogy, and you forgot your actual card, but you could still do some bank transactions based on knowing some personal information. Um, Is there anything in your system that shows who has and who has not been issued a card? Um, I would have to look into that. I, I don't know the answer of that, to be really honest with you. Um, I know if we ask the question and they say no, obviously we know that, but um, to go through each person uh, I'm not sure. I can, we can look into that tomorrow. Well, if, if they walk in the door and you scan their card, you already know they have a user agreement. The picture matches the person. Yes. Scan their card, boom, you're done. You don't have to look them up. If they walk in the door, they don't have their card with them. Oh, I forgot it today. Then you could take the extra couple minutes to look them up and make sure that they have a user agreement. So I just wanna make sure that, you know, one, we've got all this COVID stuff going on. I wanna make sure that everything is done, like temperature checks, like we discussed, asking the appropriate questions like we discussed, and making sure that the people that are walking through our door are our people. And I, I don't, I'm, I'm not sure if you have people from outside right now coming in to take fitness classes. I don't know if you're allowing that, but that's something else that we'd have to work on later. 
Right. And to answer that question really fast, uh, yes, we do. We have people come, um, non-residents who pay. Um, but they're paying at the door, right? Yes, or they have a punch card in the system. So they may have, you know, that was part of what we offered here is uh, instead of paying the $5 every single time and bringing cash with you or a credit card, you could prepay and it's in our system. They don't carry an actual punch card with them. Um, oh, I thought the punch card went away. Mm -hmm. I, thought, or I thought that punch card had gone away or it had been discussed at one point in time of going away. Okay, maybe maybe that was before me. I, it was before you. Okay, I don't know of any dialogue about that, um, but I do know that we have them. And so, A, they save a few bucks. B, we get money up front and uh, they don't have to carry anything with them. And uh, do we make those people sign a user agreement? Yes, yes, sir. So th again, they're in the system, they have a punch card. We know that they've signed the user agreement. Yeah. So Jed, is there, do you have a different color card that you can actually print on? Yeah, there's nothing stopping us from doing that. So a secondary card would be, you know, just so that they can feel a little more of the community, even though they're paying, um, it might be a good idea to get a card just to make it easy for the staff to identify it. And if it's a different card, you'll know if they're internal, external. The other side is, is that uh, on the punch cards, you know, for instead of doing a punch card, um, you could do an end date. I don't know if you can add extra lines inside of those cards when you print them. But uh, if you print the card with their face photo on it and they're paying for the entire month and you can put the end date of this month and they come in and they get a new card. Just to speed up the process. You know, we don't want to hold people up and hold them hostage at the counter and going, look, I need a frisk you. You're gonna have to put on some gloves. I need to take your temperature, you know, and I, I know the community's frustration of doing all of that. But, it, it, you know, really the community needs to understand that it's not just for, for the staff safety, it's for their safety as well. You know, that uh, uh, we don't have issues of COVID in our, in our centers. You know, it's a high cost. If, if there's a recognition of COVID in any of our centers, then, you know, we're talking about massive cleaning costs, massive wipe down to keep our, our community safe. So we don't want those instances to happen at all, you know. So I understand that, uh, I know that I've, I've heard a couple of community members say, you know, I really don't want my temperature taken. It's just annoying. You know, I know I'm not sick, but unfortunately, you know, it's a responsibility to the rest of the homeowners in this district that uh, everybody gets their temperature taken. Everybody gets, you know, signs off on their waivers and everybody is supposed to be using the facility that they're supposed to be using. So that's why we pay for it. So just a suggestion. I have a question. Go ahead. So you're talking about getting a card for everybody. Now, obviously, everybody has kids, but for a child, you know, to carry their own card, I don't know if that's going to work. Is there a way that the card could include the children's name for the adults? And then what about grandparents like myself when I take my grandkids? Mm -hmm to the pools, you know, how would we deal with something like that? Um, you know, to, to verify right now, what I do is I just give them their names, you know, and they look them up and then they see that they are part of a family that, that, that are members there. But I was just kind of curious, how would you deal with a family situation, maybe on the, parents cards you know everybody's name should be listed but then again like i said i wouldn't be carrying their mom and dad's cards you know how, how well, would we do if you read what it states that everyone including children will be issued a card and every time any individual walks through that door their card is scanned that gives you, that tells you how many people are using the rec center every month. Okay. Okay. Thing, I, I, if, I understand. If we printed that yes. Mr. Smith has four kids on his card and he brings <laughs> in four kids, it's just going to account for Mr. Smith. Okay. It's not going to account for how many users, users we actually have using the facility. Yeah. It, it would, it, it would just... What would Sorry, be the age limit? 
Judy's correct. What would be the age limit? Let's say a woman brings in a baby yeah. or a two-year-old. We do have homeowners or Woodman Hills residents that are in the system. And when we sign your agreement, we list on that agreement everyone in our household. So that is put in the system. But now you're saying that you want a family member, a, every child, and even if it's a three, two, and a one-year-old, to Fran, have a car? Fran, I yeah. am not saying that I want anything. <laughs> I am simply stating yeah. what it says in our bylaws. That okay. is all I'm doing. If you go to section 8.5, district residents, including children, will be issued a membership card to use for district facilities. Honey, I so understand. And I agree with you. Not me asking for anything extra. No, I'm I know, stating I know, what it says. I know that, darling. But what I'm asking is, is that bylaws also meant for a, a one-year-old, a two-year-old? I do not know. I don't, I don't have the bylaws or what you're talking about. I agree I didn't with write them. Huh? I didn't write them. I didn't vote on them. I didn't approve them. Well, I didn't either. Just I don't know. I'm stating what it says. <laughs> yeah. So we have requirements and we have been given all these random numbers for the last three years of how many people are us utilizing the rec centers. And mm -hmm. I have no way, nobody has any way of knowing how many people or where those numbers came from uh, now because well, we know that that system hasn't been used. So I, I'm going to go to Shark Tank and I'm going to invent a cardholder wallet for Woodman Hills Metro District. And it will hold, have enough slots in there for 10 kids and two parents. I'm going to Shark Tank. I'm going to invent it. Well, actually, I think they do have a correct number, John, because um, there is no way I would give an ID badge to my children. Uh, they would have it for the one time visiting the rec center that they were oh. giving the ID badge. Um, and then it would be MIA for, for eternity. It would probably yeah. end up in my washing machine. Um, yeah. I know that when I, I, yeah. I know that when I, when I check, check in, I scan my ID and they actually um, check them in via the computer. So when I check Point in, because sometimes I have one or two or zero, they're checking mm -hmm. my children in at the desk. So they don't have a card. They scan my card so that way they can see who like the parent account comes from. But then they check to make sure those two children are in the in the system and then they check them in via the computer. So I do think that if they're doing everybody the same way like that, I think they are capturing how many people are in the rec center because sometimes I'm a party of five, four or one. Um, so I think they are checking it. Just, I think, I think too young, uh, you're just gonna spend a lot of money on reprinting cards. Well, well, I think that, so, I think that's where the mom and dad come in. That's where you have a lanyard and you have everybody's card on that lanyard. And then you just hand them the card that of those people that are there. So if you have a family and you have five children and you're just there by yourself, you just show her your card. It's kind of like those little plastic cards that you get when you go to the mm -hmm. store and they scan you so they can track what you're buying, but you're supposed to get a discount down the road. So I think the card system will save on time and energy and manpower and everything. And I think it's a good idea. Oh, there we go, right there. <laughs> and I think I think the cards, it's just a matter of getting used to it. You know what I mean? Everybody just needs to understand this is now new management. This is how we're going to do it. And you have a so, card, right? So, so just, a thought, just a thought out there. Um, we, can, we can go back in and revisit the bylaws and see how it fits. You know, some of the things to take into consideration is, is that, you know, truly who's old enough to use the rec center? You know, I think cards should be given to someone that's actually capable of going in there on their own without parental supervision. And so we have to set those guidelines in the bylaw, um, you know, which has to do with a little bit of legality of what's what's actually capable for us to do as a district. Um, but we're you know, counting I mean, children. 
We're counting well, children we that go to the pool. We should, you know, as far as the children's use. Um, you know, I don't know necessarily, you know, counting, you know, five and under because, you know, they don't make that decision mom and dad do. Well, I mean, but we, we, been, we want to make sure we're counting even those kids because we've been talking for years about making sure we have programs available for all of the exactly. community. Exactly. That includes exactly. the, younger, the younger folks too. Um, so we need to, a way of accounting for all them, but I don't walk us through real quick, Jed, the process of when they come in to check in at the desk. Um, uh, just so the community members that, I mean, there may be somebody on here that doesn't use the rec center, but just walk us through that process and how we're accounting for the people, the utilization of the, of the rec centers. Troy, you have to understand that Jed has been here since <laughs> COVID started. He wasn't here prior to COVID. So no, he means right, now, right now. The way he's saying it right now is not the way we're going to do it in the future. Well, no, but he was just asking right now, what, what kind of process do they go through right now? And then how can we improve that process? So uh, right now we have a sign-up system. So... Um, Troy, to answer your question, if your family wanted to use the pool, the indoor pool, you would call the rec center uh, and you would say, okay, um, you know, there's four of us or five of us that want to use the pool, uh, the indoor pool, and we want to use it tomorrow from one to two. Uh, and our staff would check our calendar, our, our Google Doc, I should say, and we would look and we would say, okay, that is open, and we would put Stinson five times that's how we would do it uh so we are accounting for five spots for your family um in that google doc so since i've been aboard it's it's a little bit different like john is saying and a little bit easier to account for what's being used and what's not now you called today for tomorrow now tomorrow you showed up and let's say only four of you showed up instead of the five we would put a yes next to four and a no as you checked in. So that's one piece to the puzzle. And the second piece is we obviously go into your account and verify that you have a user usage agreement signed okay. and, and the names are on there. Uh, so that's our accountability right now. And it's easy in the sense of I can print out yesterday's uh, Google doc and say, okay, these are the amount of people that signed up for each thing, both RCE and CCW. These are the amount of people that actually showed up because there's a yes or a no next to it. So for me now, it doesn't break it down. Um, like I said, if you had five people and we just put stints in five times, it doesn't tell me how many of those were kids and how many were adults. Okay. That, that's one piece um, to this whole puzzle also. Um, John's hopeful and I'm hopeful. I think we're all hopeful that one day this COVID thing is, is behind us. But for now, that's an easy way of tracking things. I believe, and I, I, I'll look into it and have the staff look into it. I believe there's something else in our computer system and, and maybe Neil can help us. I know being a computer guy or uh, Rachel, um, that there's an accountability part or an accounting part, I should say, in our system somehow. I think the big thing is that, uh, and I, if I'm reading John right, is uh, he, we're trying, just want to make sure that we're covering everybody with the user agreement attached to the households the best we can um, to make sure that the user agreements are upkept and, and update, and, you know, and are correct. And that we don't have folks using the facility that have not signed the user agreement. Um, and just a better way to connect those dots so that we can verify that the user agreements have been signed. If they haven't been signed, they can't use the facility. Um, and just to make sure that that piece is covered in today's day and age, it's becoming more and more critical that we make sure that that piece is, is part of that language. Um, I think, I think we can remedy that by, by sending out, uh, with Daniel's help also, you know, mass email and also posting on the website that, um, you know, just based on everything going on with COVID and, and that type of thing, we're just, 
We want to make sure everyone is safe and, and usage agreements are updated and signed. Uh, COVID waivers are updated and signed as well as uh, pool waivers updated and signed. Uh, and if you haven't done so, uh, or you're not sure, please stop by and, and let's get that done as well as um, our membership cards. Yeah. I think that would be a starting process if, if we can get that out to the public. Um, to, to verify all that and yeah, there's a better way to do it as far as whether it's membership cards or or you know and 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 i'll leave that even if the the community has a better way that we track and and the usage and things um, by all means um get with with uh jed or the staff and, and we he can pass that up to the board and, and we can look at we can always amend the bylaw if we need to, to make the procedures better and and more fluent for the community members to be able to utilize the facilities. I know a lot of people are, I, I know we've gotten emails and phone calls and, and people that are upset because we're offering all these things in park and rec while we have a pandemic going on. Um, but as, as the board of directors, we understand there's a pandemic going on. We are all working in it every day. Uh, but we will still offer things to the community, uh, whether or not they want to attend or utilize the facilities or come to the events. That is a personal decision. We can't make that decision for them. We can only make it easy for them to access the facilities and to offer them while they're all at home right now and kids are at home bottled up in this e-learning stuff and, and, and need an outlet and things offer them, uh, resources and and facilities and programs to be able to get those those kids those family members out to exercise use for disc golf i haven't been out there to play it yet but i hear that that thing's like constantly full but and i and i understand we're i'm kind of ranting off topic here but um going back to the the card things if there's a better way to do it and we need to amend that bylaw to make it easier or even cheaper i don't know how much it costs to make those cards um we may be spending thousands of dollars to uh, of the community's money to print out a bunch of little plastic cards, you know, when we can print some paper card out and they can put it in their wallet or put it in their, uh, you know, or laminate a, a printout card or something, you know, something cheaper. I don't know. An um, ID but, chip, you know, dogs have little ID chips. We get a little ID chip in our wrist. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Good luck getting a community member to consent. Insert an ID chip. I think I'll mute myself now. Okay. Uh, um, so, do any of the other board members have anything else to add on on this topic? I think we're we're beating it up here. Um, and uh, if anybody has anything to add, please. I think we're good. Okay. I have a different subject when we get through this. On, for Parks and Rec or for a different? Parks and Rec. Okay. All right, go ahead. Uh, this regards the rec center. Um, it is a normal process when you have large construction projects to have what are called progress payments. And that means as you go periodically through the construction process, the contractor gets paid periodically through the course of the project on a percentage basis. 10% is done, 20% is done, 50% is done. As an element of that, um, we, we have now uh, established a protocol for an inspection to happen each time there is to be a progress payment. So the, the work that is, for which they are seeking payment will be the subject of inspection. If inspection is passed, then uh, the payment is made. So um, it's prudent manage money management by the board uh, to watch the finances and the activity as the construction progresses. So it's in place. There's not been a draw by hammer since April, Jerry tells me, but the protocol, protocol is in place, both the agreement and the inspector are ready to go. That's it. Perfect. 
uh, Ted, as I understand, those progress payments are actually held in escrow, and that's actually third party between Hammers and the district. So, is that correct? Uh, I don't know the source of the funds. I, um, we, we changed the agreement because ordinarily you have these inspections when there's a lender, there's not here, it's the owner, but I don't know where the check is coming from. I can I'm not sure I'm answering your question. Account. I believe it's with land title um, to answer your question, Neil. Yeah, I think that's what we covered on the meeting, so I think it is held at land title. Yeah, that's who's providing the uh, inspector person. It's their protocol. Um, I've had some dialogue with them over the last couple of days and we've got it all sorted out. But um, anyway, that's where it is. I think the really good thing to note is, is that it's actually something that's outlined inside of Hammers' actual project agreement, that there is a third party that does do that distribution. So that's a good thing to do when you have a business that you're working with that says, we need a third party. Hang on a second. You may be correct. I'm not aware that the title company is actually doing the distribution. I don't know the answer to that. I thought that the district was doing it directly. Uh, it may be the district deposits it and land title distributes it. I don't know the answer to that off the top of my head. From what I understood, it was land title. I was receiving distribution from the district and then after inspection, it was uh, distributed to hammers for whatever stage in the project that they were in. I agree with most of what you just said. I just don't know whether it's distributed by the ditch by uh, the district or by uh, by the land title. I'll look tomorrow. Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you. Anything else on Parks and Rec report or for Parks and Rec? Okay, we will move on to item 11, water and wastewater report. Jerry, you're up. Is he on here? Does somebody need to go beat on the door at the district office and wake him up? He fell asleep. Jerry, if you can hear us, we can't hear you. You're on mute. <laughs> yes, he just texted me asking if he's muted. Here, I'm going <laughs> to unmute you. Uh, it won't allow me to unmute you. You're going to have to unmute yourself, Jerry. Jerry says that he is not muted, but Jerry, the screen says that you are muted. Well, I'll start, his, I'll start his report and when he figures it out, he can just cut, kind of chime in and, and take over. So <laughs> we'll start with uh, the mains cleaned. Uh, they've cleaned through 38,281 linear feet of the mains. They've inspected a total of 34,986 linear feet. The lift stations, monthly maintenance on pump one, uh, will be pulled by the treatment technology and repaired under warranty. Uh, monitored flows on Fort Smith from 1 a.m. to 6.30 a.m. to accommodate the construction of the Meridian District Bypass, um, which we are piggybacking with a line to eliminate our underdrain uh, runoff out of the corner of Judge Orr and Eastonville. Uh, that's been that we've been losing uh, water out of that what they uh, typically call Rusty's under drain um, since I believe it was installed in 97 and this is to eliminate our loss of uh, revenue and water from that under drain that daylights there and carry it down by the uh, exfiltration gallery. Um, crews are working to clean the manhole lids after uh, County came around and chip sealed over everything. Uh, test results are in compliance with the discharge permit. Process is operating properly and discharging high quality effluent. Five loads of solids hauled from the plant. And we are, I think we've discussed several times in these meetings that uh, it costs us about $1,000 per load to haul those solids from the plant. 
the TDS study for temporary uh, dissolved solid study uh, for the uh, EPA and state is ongoing. Uh, they're preparing cell three at the wastewater treatment facility for cleaning and replacing the mixer in the south solids holding basin. Installing actuators on the aeration system. Um, let's see, the water, that's for the wastewater facility. The water facility, bacteria water samples have been submitted to the health department. Uh, we've received some brown water complaints. The crews are flushing hydrants to correct the problem. Uh, fill it, they're filling the west water pipe and taking bacterial samples. Uh, a lot of, as, as folks may have read, uh, well, let me finish reading this first. The demand is at the seasonal high point right now, but the crews are keeping everything going. Uh, so there was, right, you... what's that? Are you on there? Yeah, I I was on the phone. I can't. I just couldn't talk for some reason. They couldn't unmute me, so okay. I switched phone. Most of the time, we can't mute you. <laughs> I I, re, I, re, I resent that you thought I was sleeping. <laughs> okay, okay, I'm at so, the uh, uh, I'm at the problem with the uh, Woodman Hills Metro District and the uh, Meridian Service District. Yeah, so Meridian has been purchasing water from. Cherokee Metro District wheeling it through our system. Um, the tank has uh, recovered considerable amount of water, um, so that they're they're uh, do, we're doing a lot better. Um, uh, I'm not sure how much longer they'll be taking water from Cherokee. Uh, we'll see how they can uh, hold up after they get off Cherokee water. But at any rate, uh, I just wanted to let you know that the construction on our tanks are, is going forward. Uh, just today we got the, um, uh, our building permit finally. We've been struggling with the county ever since April, August 6th, trying to accomplish that. And um, <clears throat> so hopefully next week we'll be able to pour the floor on the, on the tank and start erecting a uh, wall. So um, keep you posted. Um, at any rate, everything looks good. We're I, I wonder if we could just touch on uh, the um, the letter and the inclusion um, uh, the inclusion resolutions right now. Um, inclusion resolutions are just simply uh, resolutions on on the inclusions that you've already voted to to approve. So I just wanted to in include them in a meeting so you could formally approve the uh, the resolutions. Okay. Okay. Can I comment on so, that? Yes. Go ahead. Um, those agreements, those resolutions are attachment C, Charlie, to the motion that we're filing in the court um, re regarding the inclusion. So um, Jerry has the underlying motion. Um, there's some information that we've been awaiting that we don't have yet. When we get that, then the motion will be attached to that motion. Then That's breaking up. one of the inclusions is for, can you hear me now? That's breaking up. Go ahead. All right, um, Circle K, uh, if you all will recall, you improved the bar and the IDC or whatever, the bent grass, the two resolutions last time, but you did not improve Circle K because we didn't have an inclusion agreement. I have no, not- Circle K was improved a long time ago. Circle K's inclusion agreement is in Circle K's hands. I'm waiting for them to sign it and send it back. Um, I'm not with you, Jerry. You, you, you took that off the table at the last meeting saying we don't no, have, didn't. let me finish please, that we don't have the agreement yet. So I'm just pointing that out. We have inclusion agreements with the two bent grass facilities. We don't have one with Circle K. Okay, well the resolutions are all for uh, inclusions that you've already approved. So if you wanna vote on those or not, it's up to you. Uh, 
disagreeing with any of them, Jerry. They get attached to the court motions. I understand They're, that, but I've right. got to have them assigned in order to attach them. I'm not disagreeing with you. I'm just pointing out mm -hmm. we don't have agreement with Circle K. I have no objection to the uh, I, resolution. I, we don't have we don't have the the agreement with Circle K, nor do we have it with Bar Holdings, nor do we have it with with uh, international development. It's in their hands. I'm waiting for them to sign it and notarize it and get it back to me. And then we will sign it and notarize it. And then I will attach the resolution and we can file it with the court. Okay. Are we all good now? You're muted, Ted. Sorry. Okay, so I'm gonna take these one. Are you? I'm gonna take these one at a time. All right. So uh, the first resolution will be 2020-6-25, and that's the resolution in order of the board of directors of Woodman Hills Metropolitan District approving a petition for inclusion into the boundaries of the district under that resolution, whereas Circle K, pursuant to the provisions of Section of uh, Title 32. Um, I have filed for a petition for inclusion and we have that resolution in front of us. And I will open that up for a motion for approval or disapproval. I motion to approve the inclusion. I have a motion on the forward to approve the inclusion. Do I have a second? I second the inclusion agreement for Circle K. So I have a motion by Sherry and a second by Neil to approve the inclusion or resolution to include Circle K into the boundaries of the district. Any further discussion on it? Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Was I missing an aye? All opposed? Okay, motion carries. So 2020-625 has motion passed. The next one is 2020-6-26. That's the resolution in order of the Board of Directors of Woodman Hills Metropolitan District approving a petition for inclusion into the boundaries of the district under this resolution. This is for the bar holdings property in Bentgrass, consisting of the 9.39 acres there at the uh, corner that they had presented uh, in the previous meeting. Uh, do I have a motion to approve or disapprove this inclusion resolution? I'll motion to approve the inclusion. Okay. I have a motion by Sherry and a second by John. Any further discussion on it? Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, motion carries. That resolution passes. Uh, the next will be 2020-6-27. This is a resolution in order of the Board of Directors for the uh, Board of the Woodman Hills Metropolitan District approving a petition for inclusion into the boundaries of the district uh, for International Development Company. And this was the other piece over in Bentgrass to be included into the district. Do I have a motion to approve that resolution or disapprove? Motion to, motion to approve that inclusion. Okay, I have a motion from Neil to approve the inclusion. Resolution, second. a second from John. Any further discussion on it? Okay, all in favor? Uh, Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay, resolution passes. The last resolution tonight will be 2020-5-28. That's a resolution in order of the board and, uh, of directors there is a typo on that, uh, should be of, not OD. Uh, directors, the board of the Woodman Hills Metropolitan District approving petition for inclusion 
into the boundaries of the district. And this is from the Fal Falcon Fire Protection District. And we had discussed that previously. Uh, I motion to approve. I have a I'll motion second. approved from Sherry and a second from Stacy. Any further discussion? <coughs> All in favor of approving this resolution of inclusion? Aye. 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 Okay, motion carries unanimous, unanimously. Uh, all of the resolutions passed unanimously. Okay, and the last piece I think, Jerry, that you needed was a letter dated August 27, 2020, um, to, uh, is this to State Bank? This is State Bank, yeah, here in Falcon. And this is part of the West Water Project, correct? That's correct. Okay, and this is a letter dated August uh, today um, to State Bank, uh, and this is to let it be understood that the Board of Directors of Woodman Hills Metropolitan District approve and give permission to State Bank of Falcon uh, to hold in reserve $61,130.88 of Woodman Hills Metropolitan District's deposited funds to acquire a letter of credit as required by the El Paso County as required by El Paso County concerning the Woodman Hills Metropolitan District water tank project. And my understanding is that the, they're requiring this line of credit even though our contractor is bond, fully bonded. That's correct. Okay. So they're essentially wanting that project to be double bonded. Okay, it doesn't really makes sense, but okay. Um, can I get a motion to approve us letting State Bank put this, uh, hold this money in reserve? I make a motion to move on this letter to State Bank. Okay. I have a motion from Neil to move on it or approve it. Second. Second from John. Any further discussion on this? Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Motion carries. Okay, anything else in water and wastewater, Jerry? No, that covers it. Okay, you didn't cover uh, Bank Grass is still building, Falcon Marketplace is continuing construction. That's correct. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all the projects are ongoing. All right. Anybody have any questions for Jerry for water and wastewater out there? Yeah, Brian, we had a secondary pump replacement that was done that, that was taken care of, and that's all with back in motion again. Um, the, uh, the, the pump had originally been pulled for a seal replacement. After reinstalling it, um, the the, the uh, contractor um, stripped a bolt in the in the mount, and so they had to come and pull it again and fix that. So it's right now it's out of commission. They just pulled it this week, and it'll have to be um, it should be reinstalled next week. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions? Okay, with no other questions, we'll move on to item 12, which is public comment regarding current board business not on the agenda. Is there anyone wishing to make public comment? Have you got any emails, Daniel? Messages? I can't hear you. You're muted. I have not. Okay, with no one uh, for public comment, we will move on to item 13, other business. Is there any other business that needs to be discussed tonight? Okay, with no other business, I'd like to uh, thank everybody for attending the meeting tonight. 
and being here. And as always, the uh, staff is available for questions, comments, as well as all your board members. If you need to send us an email, um, they are on the website. And um, and I think everybody's doing a great job of, of responding to all the emails and phone calls. And, um, and uh, we will see you all next month, I guess. Next board Thank meeting. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you, Jed. The next Woodman Hills board meeting will be on, you have the date on your the top of your head, Rachel? Is Rachel there? The September. Sorry. September 24th. Okay. So the next regular. Yeah, September 24th. Be September 24th. So look forward to seeing you all there. Um, can I get a motion for adjournment? A motion we adjourn. Okay, get a motion. Motion from John, a second from Neil. Anybody? No comments? Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Okay, we stand adjourned. Good night. Good night. Thank you all very much. Good night, everybody. Good night. Thank <laughs> you.